guys welcome back to a new tutorial this is gonna be a little bit different it's gonna be a three or four part series in the first part we are gonna be creating the wire metal mask that you just saw something like that and in the second part we're gonna be creating the whole environment with the church with the statue the animation etc and in the third part we're gonna be using this mask and integrate it into live footage like this we'll be using different techniques like motion tracking also capturing custom hdris and 3d scanning a person that we can match the shadows etc we're gonna be working within blender i'm using version 2.91 but i guess you could use any version First off, we need a kind of reference face to match the mask to its form and proportions. There are different kind of pages you could use. There is TurboSquid, which has three models. I also like Sketchfab. As soon as I got uh, my 3D model, I'm gonna import it. Now that we got it inside of Blender, we will only need to use the head, obviously, because we're creating a mask. So we're gonna go into edit mode and press one on the numpad to go into the frontal view and just delete everything except for the head. Um, one tip is activate the x-ray so when you choose the vertices it will also choose the ones on the back side. So we're gonna go here until the throat and delete everything. We can also clean this up a little bit with the, th the things that we don't really need. Okay, I think this is fine. Then we're gonna go out of edit mode again and disable the x-ray so we have a clearer image. Then I will move the whole thing to zero so we have it in the middle. To create the mask now we will be using curves. The curves will define where the mask is going. So for that we're just gonna press shift A then curve and add a path. Then we go to, into edit mode and delete all the vertices except for one. Then we choose this one, press N, open this menu and change the transform under item to zero so it's perfectly in the middle. Go out of the edit mode and press N to close this window again. Then go under modifiers and choose the mirror modifier. So we have symmetry when working with the mask. Now that we have that, we go back into edit mode and, um, and position it where the origin of the mask should be. So I want the origin to be right between the eyes. And for that, I'm gonna move it up and back. Something like that. And now I will press one to go into the frontal view with E, I can extrude the vertices and you will already see that it will mirror the same thing on the left side due to the mirror modifier. Now we just create the basic shape of the mask. Yeah, something like that. Just try whatever you want. The next thing we do is go into the top view and try to align the individual vertices to the form of the head. Maybe something like that. And always check that your curve doesn't intersect with the head. If that happens, you will need to choose one of the vertices and move it a little bit forward. You basically just do this now with uh, as many curves as you want to get the basic shape of your mask. And now it's time to add some more curves. Just press Shift D to duplicate the path. Press Escape so we don't move it and press Tab to go into edit mode. Delete all the vertices except the first one so we can start at the beginning again. Now we just extrude it again. Try out different things, uh, see what fits you, what you like. 
just gonna do something like that. Then go into the side view again and align it to the face. So just repeat again, shift D to duplicate it, escape to not move it, go into edit mode, delete all the vertices except the first one and just do it again. Now I'm gonna go something like that. Okay, shift D, escape, edit mode, delete again. Choose the first one and extrude it out. Um, now that we got the basic shape of our mask, select the path, press tab to go into edit mode, select all the vertices, press right click, set spline type poly, and then set spline type again to Bezier. Then right click again, set handle type to automatic. What this will do is create nice curves in our mask, so it's not as hard and edgy as it was before. Now we just repeat this process for all our paths. Choose one, select all of them, poly, then Bezier, then set the handle type to automatic, just like that. Just repeat this with every single path you did. Now that we got that, uh, what you can do is also play a little bit more with the form of your mask until you are happy. Just do whatever you like. Choose a path and in edit mode by rotating with R, you can change the rotation of the vertices. With S you can alter the scale and control the curve. Okay, now that we got that, um, we need to add two things. Press Shift A, add a circle, and then Shift A again to add a path. Now I'm just gonna name my paths real quick to know which one is which. So then our circle, we're gonna call bevel, and the straight line, the, we're gonna call taper. Then we're gonna select one of our paths, go into object data properties and underneath here we have a lot of options to play with like the resolutions if you would like to make it more blocky again or a little bit more smoothed out and now comes the most important part giving the lines which is created some geometry for that we're gonna go here um, under bevel and choose object for the object we're gonna choose our circle we created and called bevel and you see right away uh, it looks horrible but that's just because our circle is a little bit too big we're gonna choose our circle and scale it down a lot so and now you can see we got getting somewhere i'm just gonna move the circle a little bit to the side so we can see it better and the cool thing is you can also alter the circle for example if you would push this one in, um, our bevel will change accordingly. Like this you could make very interesting shapes for the mask, but for now we're just gonna keep it as a circle. Um, the next thing we do is choose our path again. In geometry we have the taper object. And for that we're just gonna choose our taper. Right away it disappeared completely. We're just gonna open a second window so we have one with a front view and in here we choose our taper object, press shift to go into edit mode and press 7 to look at it from above. Choose those vertices, press X and dissolve vertices. So we only have two points in a straight line. We're just going to choose this one and move it down a little bit. Now you can see our path that we drew before gets a little bit of geometry again. We're just gonna go out again, choose our circles and scale it up a little bit. Like that. This taper object basically tells Blender where it should add thickness along the path we drew before. For example, if I put it 
back to the red line, it will be zero. And if I pull it out, it gets thicker, as you can see. What you can also play with, if you want to, is add more vertices, for example, like that. For example, like that. And like this, you can see wherever there is uh, more space between the red line and our vertice, it gets thicker on our path. That's a very cool technique that you can play around with um, to get some special or crazy forms. But for our tutorial, we're just gonna keep it um, as a straight line. So I'm gonna delete everything again. Yeah, and I think I'm happy with how that looks. I'm just gonna repeat this step for all the other curves. Go to the taper object, choose our taper, bevel with our circle. Okay, now that we have uh, made this for all of our curves, you can see we already got something that looks quite nice. What you can do now is always go back into edit mode and change the, the curves to your liking. Extrude some of them, uh, move them forward or backward so it fits a little bit better. I like to make the mask a little bit more flush with the face. Yeah, I guess I'm happy with the mask for now. Next thing we will try to make is a material. I'm just gonna go into the rendered mode. And right now, obviously everything is dark because we don't really have materials. For my settings here, I usually like to use cycles, but of course you can also use Eevee if you prefer it. Then I'm gonna use adaptive sampling, which um, makes the render process a little bit faster. And if you have it available, I use optics denoiser in the viewport and also in the render. But that's only available with NVIDIA graphic cards. Right, um, yeah, and for my samples, you don't really need it that high. Maybe something around 400 and for the viewport 50 is fine. I usually like to work with HDRIs for my lighting. For that, I'm just gonna open a shader editor. Go in the world tab. Oh, there's already something in it. And just search for environment texture. Okay, I get all my HDRIs from HDRI Haven. I will leave the link in the description below. And voila, we got some light. Now I'm just gonna hide the head. What you need to do to also hide it in the renders is press this button on the top right here and choose disable in renders. Now we can choose our head and disable it in the viewport and the renders. Now we are left only with our mask. I'm just gonna choose the mask and switch again back to the object uh, shader create a new material, call it mask. And I like to go for some kind of metal material. So I'm just gonna pump up the metallic value and maybe pull down the roughness a little bit and give it a bit of a darker color. I will also add a noise texture to my roughness to give it some variation. To see how the noise looks, just press Ctrl Shift and click the noise texture. For that, you will need the Node Wrangler add-on activated. You can just go under Edit, Preferences and search for Node, search for Node Wrangler. This will allow us to see only the noise. And right now we don't really see anything. That's probably because it's too big. So we will just uh, play around with the scale value until we find something that fits our needs. Uh, this looks way better already. We can also play with the details and the distortion if you want to, but you will need to try for yourself. Um, then we're just gonna press Control Shift again and click the principle to BSDF and add a color ramp node in between. The color ramp node will let us control uh, the intensity of our noise texture. So if we will 
pull on this slider, you can see some of the very shiny parts will come through. I just play around with our my settings a little bit to see whether I like it or not. Now you can see it gets a kind of frosted look to it. I kind of like this. Maybe we should change the black to something a little bit brighter and the white to something a little bit more dim. Yeah, I think this looks fine. And I'm just going to copy the noise, add a bump note and connect the bump note to my normal input. This will allow me to get some more details. Just connect the color into the height. You can see the metal gets a lot rougher. Right now you can also play around with the scale, uh, with the detail and everything a little bit and also with the strength and the distance. I'm just going to choose a very small number like that, but you can already see the metal material looks much more organic and more realistic than it did before. I'm just going to choose all the other parts of the mask and apply the material to it. Okay, maybe um, it's a little bit strong, the bump map, so I will decrease the strength a little bit. Yeah, right, that's it. That's how you create this kind of mask. In the next tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create the animation for the mask, how to let it grow, and also how we create the whole interior of the church, the stone statue, the lights and the animation. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll see us next time.